those that are doing so well were those that I released them with a blessing. But those who left and broke my heart and divided the church, a lot of them have died. And a lot of them have withered. And a lot of them have also been divided by others. Say conspiracy. There is an evil plot and there is a conspiracy against this house and against your bishop and his family and this house. And I don't live in America, so I'm just going to tell it as it is and get out of here. <laughs> and you can't do me anything and you can't sue me because I don't operate under your laws. See, I hear you. But since I've been here, I've been scanning the place. I was here this afternoon in the spirit. I came here in the afternoon. And I'm scanning this place. There's a conspiracy against this house. And a conspiracy against the bishop, his children, the entire family, his brother. That whole thing is part of the conspiracy. He wasn't supposed to have that thing. It's, a, it's part of the whole conspiracy to wipe away a whole family, cut off the legacy. But Paul said, we are not ignorant of his devices. Are you hearing me, somebody? Tell somebody, I'm not ignorant. I'm not ignorant. Tell somebody, I can see. I can see. Tell somebody, I'm not blind. I'm not blind. Hallelujah. Thank you, for whoever is it. Behind the sound, thank you for working with me and helping me out. I appreciate it. Thank you. Can you put your hands together and thank God for them, please? You see, you don't have to accept everything. I'm telling you, we, sh we don't have to accept some things. I was in an island called St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, 23 years ago, preaching for Dr. Lou Collimore. Dr. Collimore. And they said that there was a hurricane coming to the city of St. Thomas. And they had prepared the city for the hurricane. And I decided I was leaving that night because it would come the next morning. And I said, I'm getting out of here. I don't belong here. So I, I packed my stuff and I said, I said, I said, Dr. Collimore, will you please give me my check? <laughs> and he said, but you told the people you're going to be here for three more days. And I said, I told them without knowing that there is coming a hurricane. <laughs> now that there is coming a hurricane, brother, I'm out of here. And uh, God is not going to hold me responsible for anything I said because I don't belong here. So you, you are the man of God and it's on your head, I'm out. So he said, okay, I'll get you your check in the morning when I'm taking you to the airport. That night, the spirit of God said to me, he said, son, I want you to stay. And I said, stay where? <laughs> he said, stay in this city. And I said, Lord, uh, this is not fair. I hope it is you talking to me because I'm from Africa. I've never seen a hurricane before and I don't know what to do with a hurricane and he said say stay I want to show you something and I lived in a hotel called um, it was right uh, was Sugar Bay Sugar Bay who went with me one of them was with me anyways I was in a hotel called Sugar Bay and the spirit said to me at a particular time of the night 12 midnight and he said, get out of your room and go on the terrace and I'll show you something. And I came out and I stood by the terrace and the spirit said to me, he said, stretch your hands over the waters and speak as I command you. And then I heard the voice and he said, command the spirit that is riding upon the wings of the wind. To stand down and relinquish its powers. And turn back from the shores of St. Thomas. So I said that. And then the spirit said it's not coming to St. Thomas. It will go somewhere else. So in the morning, 
I told Dr. Colimo I wasn't going. I would stay and finish the program. He said, are you sure? I said, yes. So I have declared an early morning prayer meeting, five to seven every morning. So I said, I'm coming to the morning prayer meeting. So when I went, the Lord said, tell them that the hurricane wasn't coming. So I made an announcement that the hurricane was not coming. Dr. Colimo was very nervous about the announcement. And after he took me to his office and he said, you don't do that here. And I said, what do you mean? He said, we are used to hurricane. It comes every year. We are ready for it. The people are ready for it. And he said, what you just said, it's going to put me in a lot of trouble. And I said, what trouble? He said, if the hurricane comes, they will say I brought a false prophet here. I said, it's not on you. It's on me. He said, but you, did, you shouldn't have said that. You should have told me. And I said, I'm sorry. I've already said it. I was watching CNN and the commentator was commenting about the hurricane. It was coming. For whatever reason, I heard him saying something strange, strange, strange. It's losing its power and momentum and speed and it stopped and it went to another island, St. Martin. And it didn't come to St. Thomas. I have a lady, she's here right now in Maryland. She used Joel Marine. She used to work for the governor of St. Thomas. She resigned her work and came and worked for me two years for free, no salary. She just wanted to learn how to pray when she saw what happened. Are you hearing me, somebody? See, I hear you. I'm just telling you some of this because for whatever reason, it looks like the power of God and the supernatural has left the church in America. We have replaced the supernatural. Now we need structure. We need systems. We need laid down procedures. We need social media. All these things are necessary. But nothing replaces the supernatural. Come on somebody. Put your hands together somebody. Clap your hands and say yes. There is no substitute for the place of the Holy Ghost in the church. Systems and structure must not take the place of the Holy Ghost because when it does, we are in trouble. And the church has been invaded. We've been invaded by witches. There are warlocks among us. I'm telling you, when I went back to Ghana, they had invaded the church and I have to literally ask certain individuals to stand on their feet in the church openly. I did it. And I asked them, where do you come from? Where are you from? How long have you been in this church? What are you doing in this church? God wants you to go back to where you came from. And I sent a lot of people out of the church because they were on assignment. I sent them out. And the church wasn't growing. When I began to send some of those people out, everywhere started packing up to the third level, the overflow. Everywhere was jammed. Before then, the people weren't coming. Because the enemy had sent within our ranks his people assigned to cast spells. And the praise and worship was wrong. And I said, something is wrong with the choir. So I called for a deliverance service. Went to the choir and asked the Holy Ghost fire to sweep and scan the choir. And things began to happen in the choir. People were manifesting, demons were coming out. The singing was wrong. And then the Spirit of the Lord said, check where they count the money, the counting room. They are stealing money. And I said, who can be stealing money? And the spirit said, they are stealing money. So I went to the counting room and I said, I'm warning everybody here. If you are stealing money, get out. Because the judgment of God is coming upon you. And I said, the Holy Ghost said, somebody is stealing money. They started looking at each other. 
It was a matter of a few weeks. And we set a trap. We set a trap. Somebody put $10,000 cash in the, in the offering and we didn't find the money. So I said, let's set a trap. I said, let's put a thousand dollars cash. So put a thousand dollars cash in there. And when they counted the money, I said, did any cash come in dollars? Everybody said, no. And I said, okay, fine. Security, nobody leaves without being searched. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. And I said, get the women to search the women and get the men to search the men. And I said, women, search them, spirit, soul, and body. Go everywhere. Use your eyes, your finger, your nails. And we got the thousand dollars. Hello. Why you look at me with that strange look? In the church. Started dealing with pastors and bishops and prophets who were stealing money. Listen, without the Holy Ghost, we are in trouble. Jesus said he will show you things to come. He's the only one that reveals and uncovers. I'm telling you. A lady called me and said, it's life and death. I need to see you. And I said, come. And I said to security, she's on assignment. When she comes in, open that door. And I want one security sitting there and another sitting there. And I don't do that. So she came in. The door was open. I said, sit down. You said, it's life and death. What can I do for you? She said, I just want to be your friend. And I said, you want to be my friend. <laughs> Somebody say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus. Tell your Bibles to John chapter 8 verse 35. Somebody say, a conspiracy. Talk to me again. Somebody say, a conspiracy. John chapter number 8 and mm -hmm. verse 35. Mm -hmm. And the servant abideth not in the house mm -hmm. forever, but the son he abideth forever. You see, a servant does not abide in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. Say a son. Say a son abides. Say sons don't leave. But they abide. You see, there is a deception going on in the body of Christ where sons get up and they say, Well, the spirit has spoken to me to move on. There is nothing like that in the old testament or in the new testament where a son leaves his father's house by the Holy Spirit. The God and the Holy Spirit does not contradict scripture. Now, I don't care who is the prophet who prophesied unto you, but if any prophet prophesies to a son that is time to leave your father or leave your father's house, that prophet is in contradiction with the scriptures. A son abides in the house forever. Sons don't leave the house. And they don't leave their father. And sons don't work for salary. They don't work for salary. They work for themselves. My children in the ministry, I don't pay them. I don't pay them because they're working for inheritance. They are not working for salary. Servants work for salary. But sons work for inheritance. Somebody say, I hear you. So whenever you hear sons leaving their father... Or the house of their father in the name of the spirit has spoken to me or a prophet told me or I had a dream or the Holy Ghost said it's a conspiracy to weaken the hands of the father it's a conspiracy to divide the house it is never God and I am speaking on authority 
And let anybody who calls themselves an apostle or a prophet, I am speaking upon the authority of the scriptures from the throne room perspective by the judicial powers of heaven, that God and the Holy Spirit will never contradict scripture. Sons don't leave their father. Sons abide in the house forever. And that is what Jesus said. He said a servant does not abide forever by the son. I had a young man in my church. I brought him up. Great guy. I took him to another country called La Côte d'Ivoire. He did some bad things and I brought him to Ghana and I put him over the main church. He began to preach some doctrines and started moving on the wealthy people in the church. He was very gifted. I trained him. Very, very gifted young man. He was getting all these monies. And I called him to order one day before the church. And I said, you are out of order. You will never preach this kind of sermon in the church. So I sat him down. He got offended. And he got a group of people in the church that gave him money. One time he walked into my office and said, the Lord has spoken to me to leave to start my own church. And I said, I said, you are not a son, you are a servant. He said, no, I'm a son. I'm your son. I said, no, I renounce you. And I disinherit you. You are not a son. Because Jesus said, a son abided in the house forever. I said, sons don't leave. So if you claim you are living, then you were never a son. All this time you've been a servant. And all you were doing was to use me to build your own ministry. And someone else will use you to build their own ministry. Somebody say a conspiracy. He stood in my office. At this time, he had a lot of money. He had a lot of money. And he said, I'm leaving. And I said, listen, if you want to start a church, that is what I do. You know that. Let me build a church for you. But I don't want you to divide the church and the flock. You will come under judgment. I don't want that to happen to you. And he smiled and he walked off. He disrespected, he dishonored me and he just smiled and he walked off. I didn't say anything. I left him alone. After two years, I was in a meeting and I was in a hotel and I had a call that he was dead. And most of the people who followed him came back to church and they are still in church today. And his family came to see me and I told security, tell the family to leave the church premises. I don't want to talk to them. I don't know them. Tell them to leave and I have nothing to do with that young man. And I told all the bishop, nobody goes to his funeral and nobody gets involved with that funeral. He was never a son. He's a traitor. He's a Luciferian. He's an Absalom. When he comes to the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, if you come against the church, you are in trouble. Because it caused God the blood of his son Jesus to build and to redeem this church. There is only one thing Jesus is doing and this is what he's doing. He's building his church. He's not building your family or my family. He's building his church. And he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And whenever anybody by deception, by any gifting or anointing comes against the church, the body of Christ, you are a traitor, you are a Luciferian, and you are an Absalom. That's who you are. God is more orderly than all of us. And he invested so much in Lucifer. Isaiah 14. Ezekiel. Amazing. The investment God made in Lucifer. And yet, Lucifer rose up against God. And betrayed God. Betrayal is a spirit. And it works with ambitious young men and women. And elders in the church who never stands up for what is right because they lack revelation. See a conspiracy. A son abides in the house forever, but a servant does not. And I've seen them over and over and over again. They, they use the prophetic, a revelation, God said it's time to move on 
Whenever a revelation comes and it doesn't line up with what Jesus said, you set it aside. And I'm speaking to you because I've been scanning the church since I've been coming here for the prayer summit. There was the, one of the Sundays I came here. I wanted to say something and I said, you know something? It's none of my business. Let me stay out of it. But I keep coming, I keep coming and the conspiracy is still going on. And it's time for somebody to raise an alarm that sons must dwell and remain. They don't leave. And whoever it is that has left or wants to leave and claims to be a son is not a son. I'm just telling you. I have been pastoring for 41 years and I have so many churches under me. I, I oversee churches in America, North America, Europe, Asia, everywhere. Mega, mega, mega churches. And I've seen a lot happen to churches. I'll go in there, I will speak. Before Cartin Pearson's situation came, I was in Cartin's church. And the mother was sitting there. And I said, I need 300 intercessors to be raised in this church. The place was packed in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I said, I need 300 intercessors because the enemy is coming against Captain Pearson. And it's a national conspiracy. And if we don't raise a standard, I need 300 intercessors. Nothing was done about it because I just said, you know what? They think I'm some African preacher who has come here and I need some offering. So they're just going to look at me as some African preacher from the jungles. And then another time, I was back there preaching for Dr. Morris Arello. And I saw Captain Pearson's mother. And I said, Mama, the enemy is coming for your son. I need 300 intercessors. He said, we're working on it. Son, I said, okay, Mama. And I left it. The rest is history. There was a church in Baltimore, David Brown. I think Bishop knows David Brown. I was there before that crisis and that whole thing came. Before Jumal crisis came. I saw it. I was there. I prayed for Jumal. I hear people criticizing Paula White for taking Zachary Tim's church. I was there before the crisis of Zachary Tim began. And before Zachary Tim died, I took him to Ghana. And the Lord said, at the age of 47, there is an attack on his life. And I told Zach, but there is something about America. You people, you value money. You value personalities, you value systems than the voice of the spirit. Are you hearing me? Paula White wasn't interested in Zachary Tim's church. She didn't want it. I told Paula White to go and take the church. She didn't want it. She said, Papa, I don't want it. And I said, she, she called me and said, Papa, what do you think about Bishop so so and so and so. I've spoken to him to take over the church because it's a conflict. And I said, Paula, have you thought about taking up the church yourself? She said, no. I said, but that is what the Lord is saying that you have to take over that church. She said, then talk to Bishop Jake. So I called Bishop and I said, Bishop, Paula has to take over that church. She said, you sure? I said, yes. So I got Paula to leave, to take over that church. So if you want to fight Paula, come fight me. And nobody saw it coming because I was on the board. <clears throat> I was among those who were appointed to help put a new pastor over the church. And they were going to put one of my bishops in charge of the church, very anointed. Very powerful. And I said, no, he doesn't have what it takes to handle that church. He will kill the church. Let Paula take it. You're looking at me, strangely. I'm just telling you what happens behind the scenes. And I am not a Democrat or what do you call the other one. I don't belong to your politics here. I'm not white and I'm not black. I'm the redeemer of the Lord. I'm a believer. I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. See, I hear you. I don't get involved in your politics. 
Are you hearing me, somebody? My, my wife is a Democrat. And I told her that Trump was going to win. And she said, You're and I said, baby, I don't care about your politics. I'm just telling you that I don't know why God says Trump. And I said, I don't know the man. And uh, if you have a problem, go ask God, but he's going to win. Then when the last scandal came, she said to me, your prophecy is not going to happen. <laughs> he's finished. And I said, watch and see. Boom. And he said, but, but I don't understand this. <laughs> Let me tell you something. God doesn't think the way we think. Are you hearing me, somebody? Don't subject God to your logic and to your philosophy. God is bigger than your thinking and your philosophy. See, I hear you. If we want to be the body of Christ, then let's be the body of Christ. And let the world be the world. And let's be the body of Christ. See, I hear you. There are too many sons killing their fathers. And I'll tell you something. If you help the devil to kill your father, you will never be a father. And I hear something. I hear young men say, well, I have a vision. I have a vision. Okay, good. But let me tell you something. The vision of the young man is in the dream of the old man. And if you want your vision to come to pass, you have to work with the old man to fulfill the old man's dream. If you don't help the old man to fulfill his dream, your vision will never come to pass. Joseph was a young man and he was supposed to see visions, but he began to dream when the old man put his mantle upon him. We are breaking ranks in the church. Listen, my father had 36. So at one father, 37, one died before he passed. So 37 kids. Now don't look at me with that look now. You got yours too. Before my father passed, okay? Listen, tap somebody. Tell somebody, don't sleep. Tap somebody. Okay, tap somebody and tap that lady, okay? Yeah. Stay awake. Tell somebody, stay awake, stay awake. I, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you as a family, okay? Can I have the liberty to do that? Okay, I don't want to come and preach on strong messages. I can preach messages and make you excited, stand on your feet, scream and yell, get the instruments and everything. I don't need all that, you know? You know, I used to do that. When I was a young preacher, I used to holler a lot. You know, and I went to this church and the Holy Ghost told me what to preach. And I, I looked at the people and I said, they are not going to accept this. I need, I need to preach something to make them happy. So I preached and I hollered and everybody was screaming, jumping, bringing offerings to the altar and all that. And I went to the hotel and the Holy Ghost whipped me. And he said, he said you compromised. Why did you do that? And I said, because, you know, these people, they won't accept what you wanted me to tell them. You know, this is America. And an old friend of mine just told me, and, and he knows Benson Idahosa. Idahosa told me, he said, when you come to America, don't bring your anointing here. Leave your anointing back in Africa. <laughs> That's what Idahosa told me. He said, he said, they don't need your anointing. Just go there, do what they do, and take your offering and go back to Africa. <laughs> and, and an old friend of mine, you, you know him, he passed away, Bill McKinley. Yeah, great teacher. And Bill told me the same thing. Bill said, when you come in here, young preacher, you're on fire. Hold your fire and just do what you are told. And he said, you preach too long, you won't get an offering. The people will get up and walk and leave. You know, the last time I preached for Bishop Jakes, they gave me 45 minutes. So I called him and I said, Bishop, I can't do 45 minutes. Come on. He, and he said, what do you want? And I said, I need some time. And I said, I need time to allow the Holy Ghost to move. 
And he said, I'm not putting brakes on you. But in America, the people come from work straight to church. So unless there is a move of God, they will start living at a particular time. And I said, remove the brakes and allow me and see what happens. And we were there up to 10, 30, 11. Nobody left. There was such move of God and miracles and healing. It was all over. Nobody left. Are you hearing me, somebody? So I'm telling you something. This is very important. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you because something is going on and I'm scanning the realms of the spirit and I have authority to speak and I will deal with it. There is a conspiracy and I'm telling you again, how many of you love Bishop? You sure about that? You love his family? Then you have to fight. There's a conspiracy against Bishop and his entire family, and there's a conspiracy against this church. And the mandate of God on this church is not yet over. Let nobody tell you it is over. It's not. The best days of this church, are you hearing me? It's yet to come. You are not clapping. You are not excited. You are not excited. Are you hearing me? Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody fool you. And don't let anybody tell you it's time to move on. Move on to what and to where. At least you know Bishop and you know this house. The new place you are going, do you know what will befall them? Do you know when, when, when Abraham was separated from Lot? Lot didn't know what was going to befall him. He didn't know what was going to come and what was going to happen to Sodom. And where he pitched his net or his tent. He thought he was good. But when he was separated, the blessing, listen carefully. How many fathers do I have here? Give me a wave of ring. Fathers. How many fathers do I have here? And then how many mothers do I have? Let me see how many mothers I have here. Thank you, mothers. Thank you. Let me tell you something. How many single women do I have here? Give me a wave of ring. Single women. How many single men do I have here? Single men. Not yet married. Single men. When it's time for you to marry and you find a girl, take her to your mother. And ask your mother to scan her for you. After mama scans her, then take her to daddy for daddy's blessings. She can fool your father, but she can't fool your mother. I'm telling you. There is something about mothers when it comes to women. And let me say this to every, everyone here. How many of you want to live long? And succeed in life. You want to live long and succeed in life. There is only one protocol to do that. Honor your father and your mother. It's simple as that. Now, now, my father was a very hard man to please. My father was a very hard man to He was a politician. He was an ambassador, a businessman. And my father also was a diviner. My father lived in London and he knew what was going on in our house in Ghana. And he will call you and tell you specifically what you are doing. He operated by a familiar spirit. Whenever we were speaking in tongues, he would call me and say, stop speaking in that language. Pray in English. Pray in any language, but I don't want you to speak in that language. And I said, why, Dad? And he said, when you speak in that language, you drive away my spirits when I invoke them to come. So before I understood the power of speaking in tongues, it was my father that helped me to understand that there is something about speaking in tongues. Then one time, 
he took me to one of his properties. And there were coconut trees. And there was one coconut tree that had no fruit on it. And my father spoke to that particular coconut tree and said, I am talking to you and you better hear me. If I come back next year and you haven't born fruit, I will cut you down. Do you hear me? And he walked off. And I said to myself, what is wrong with this old man? I said, thank God I've got him born again. He's losing it now. But I couldn't say it. You don't talk to him that way. So I kept my mouth shut, but I said it in my head. Then he said, what, what are you thinking in your head about what I just did? And I said, nothing, Papa, nothing. <laughs> the following year, I went back and the coconut tree had fruit upon it. And I said, wow. So they understand the rules of engagement on the other side. You remember Jesus spoke to the fig tree. And the Bible said that Jesus answered the fig tree. Then the, another translation said, and Jesus answered the fig tree or he responded to the fig tree. You know what it means? It means that the fig tree said something. It said something, nobody heard it, but Jesus heard it. It's like women. Women can say a lot without opening their mouth. Yeah, they have a body language. They can say something with their body. And yet they haven't spoken. And they can say a lot with their eyes. Just the way they look at you. They're going to tell you something without saying anything. And they can cry and say a lot without saying nothing. Are you hearing me somebody? Somebody say talk to me. You will see a pastor or a bishop after church with a wife standing talking to a young lady and the young lady is playing on the bishop and he don't know it, he can't tell and the wife is standing there and she knows exactly what's going on and the bishop has no idea of what's going on, he thinks he's just trying to help the young lady and the wife will just look at the young lady and position herself in a way and suddenly the young lady will say, okay, all right, see you, bishop. Then the bishop will turn to the wife and say, what did you just do? What did you tell her? And he said, nothing. Come on, let's go home. Listen, when it comes to dealing with women, I tell my bishop and my pastors, when it comes to dealing with women, you don't need the Holy Ghost. Surround yourself with the holy sisters in the church. I have a lot of daughters around me. They've been around me some 40 years, some 30 years, some 25 years, uh, 35 years. They are around me a lot. When all these strange sisters come around for prayer, I just know them as, as soon as I see them, I can tell. And I just call my daughters and I say, help me take care of this one. She will help you. I say, this one will help you. Hallelujah. This one will help you. I just send them my way. I don't need to waste the time of the Holy Ghost trying to descend somebody when I have daughters, spiritual daughters around. They can tell. They just walk around. One will just come and say, Papa, that one coming, where is she from? I say, I don't know. I haven't seen her before. He said, that one, Papa, is not good at all. I said, why don't you come around and save me now? <laughs> Let me show you a scripture and then I want us to pray, okay? Come to John 8. John chapter 8, verse 49. The Amplified Version. John chapter 8, verse 49. I want you to look at the scripture here. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, uh -huh. but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. Listen, he said what? Talk I, to me. He said what? I have no devil, uh -huh. but I honor my father. And ye dishonor me. You know what it means? Look at me. You know what it means? This is what it means. He said, I don't have a devil because I honor my father. Tell somebody, I don't have a devil because I honor my father. 
You know what it means? It means that those who don't honor their father and their mother has a devil. That is all that it is. This came out of the mouth of Jesus himself. He said, I don't have a devil. Why? Because I honor my father. I have never seen any man and woman, physical or spiritual, who dishonor their parents, their father and their mother that succeeded and lived long. I had an elder sister of mine when I was young growing up. She and my mom, they used to fight a lot. My God, they would fight in the night, in the morning. They, they fight all the time. And then my mom, an African woman, she would say, you go on and disrespect me. Keep disrespecting me. When you go to have your kids, you will know what it means to be a mom. And I didn't understand that. So she got married. She started having kids. And every time she went to have kids, she has to go to caesarean. They have to cut her. Then one time I was in Atlanta having a meeting with Jerry Savelle and some old friends of mine. And I was right in the meeting and the spirit of God said, go to your hotel and pray. And I said, go to my hotel and pray. It's not fair. I want to hear Bobby G. Mack. There's, there's a woman called Bobby G. Mack in those days. I don't know if you ever heard that name. Bobby G. Spirit said, go to your hotel. So I went to my hotel. And I didn't know what to pray about. So I began to pray in the Holy Ghost. Whilst I was praying in tongues, the Spirit gave me interpretation to what I was praying on. So I understood what I was praying about. So I called my sister's husband. They live in London. And I said, Morris, how is Dorothy? And, and the first thing he said is, how do you know? And I said, what is it? Talk to me. I don't know anything. He said, she's at the intensive ward and this time it doesn't look good. So the Spirit said, call your mom. So I called my mom and I said, mom, I want you to do me a favor. And she said, what is it? And I said, I want you to go to God and I want you to renounce the curses you place on Dorothy. And she said, but I never curse her. And I said, you did. And she said, how did I curse her? Don't talk to me that way. And I said, mom, with all respect, you did. And let me help you. Whenever you said when she goes to have her kids, she will know what it means to be. A mother, you were putting a curse on her and the enemy is using her. You have to release her. So she did that. And I call her the day after and she said, I've done this, that she'll be fine. For the first time, after having a lot of kids through caesarean, the last pregnancy, she had the child without a caesarean. And you know what the doctors told me? You can find out if you have doctors here. They said, if you begin having kids with caesarean, it's going to be all the way. Now, you can't tell me that it was not true because I saw it. And it worked. So I told my mom, I said, you have to be careful when you are angry what you say to your kids. And there's a lot of parents, we curse our kids. And there are a lot of kids here. Sometimes your father and your mother can offend you and can do you wrong. But be careful. Be careful how you handle it. Because the enemy will provoke you to rebel. In order to vex your father and your mother. To say something they shouldn't say. That will give the enemy spiritual authority over you. Jesus said. I honor my father. And because I do, I don't have a devil. And if you are a man of God and you have a spiritual father, you have to be very careful how you handle him. Because your spiritual father doesn't have to even curse you. They don't have to say anything. The fact that you violate them and you dishonor them, you have opened a door for the adversary to come after you. And it's just a matter of time. And I've seen them, sometimes they, they start and their church is, is doing well and everybody is rushing there and running there and I just laugh. And I tell my bishop, I said, it, I said, vindication is in the womb of time. Just give it some time, it will wither. And I've seen them wither all the time.
Say a conspiracy. The reason why a lot of young men and women are dying early and are carrying illnesses of old age is because of what I'm telling you. Dishonoring fathers and dishonoring mother will take your life prematurely, I'm just telling you. I haven't seen any man or woman of God who dishonors their father and their mother and succeed in ministry and live long. It won't happen. It doesn't happen. If you want to succeed in the Lord, in ministry, in life, honor your spiritual father and mother and honor your natural father and mother. Now I know in America a lot of crazy things do happen. Because I've been told several times by ladies who come to me and my father took advantage of me and my father took advantage of me, fine. He's wrong, but that doesn't give you the right to dishonor him also. Because he's a setup. Somebody say a setup. Somebody say a conspiracy. Because he violated you, it's a setup for you to dishonor him so that the generation will be cut off. How? He violates you, you dishonor him, you don't succeed, you die prematurely, and there is no legacy. Simple. Now, I can't counsel you and tell you how you should handle it. But what I'll tell you is, it doesn't matter how wrong your father and your mother is, still honor them as much as possible. It's for your good. Do not disrespect them. Don't do it. My father was so difficult to honor and to deal with. And when I saw that the man was very powerful spiritually, not in the Lord, but in the other side, I made a vow in my heart. And I'll tell you why I did this. When I was a young Christian, I went to fast and pray with a friend of mine. And while we were praying, the Holy Ghost said, you have offended your father, stop the prayer and go and apologize to him. And I said, when did I offend him? Then I remembered that a situation had happened the day before and I walked off. And he said, I'm talking and you are walking off. And I didn't mind, I just walked off because he was wrong. Something happened that shouldn't have happened. And I said, he's out of order. You can't just do that because I live in your house. He didn't say anything. So when I came back to apologize, I called on my grandma. And I said to my grandma, I've offended the old man. Can you please come with me? And I want to ask for his forgiveness. And, and she looked at me and she said, you're a very wise young man. <laughs> so when I finished apologizing, my father said, now I believe God has called you. And I said, why did you say that? He said, you would have seen what would have happened to you tonight. I said, wow. Then I went back to pray. The next day we came, my father was lying in bed and he was dying. Then the Lord said, what was supposed to come on you has turned on him because you beg for forgiveness. So it has turned on him. So pray for him. So I prayed for him and he was okay. From that day, I learned lessons in the spirit that everything the Bible tells us to do, there are reasons. And my spiritual father, one of my spiritual father, came to see me. Every January, he would come and talk to me and he would tell me what the Lord was saying. When I was taken into heaven a few years ago, I was in heaven for one hour, 45 minutes, and I saw the city of T.L. Osborne. The angel took me to a high mountain and he showed me this beautiful city. And he said, that is T.L. Osborne city. And I said, that is my grandfather in the faith. And the angel said, do you know anybody here in heaven? And I said, yes. And he was the man whose name I mentioned and he, he came to see me. Now I'll tell you something. One day he came to see me and he was living and he said, he said, young man, I like your father. And I said, 
but he's not born again. He's not saved. And he said, I know, I know, I know. And I said, why do you like him? He said, because he uses his spiritual powers to protect his kids. So he's protecting you until you become strong spiritually. That's why I like him. And I said, wow. God uses the devil to protect his kids. <laughs> you remember Joseph? You remember Moses? In the house of Pharaoh? The same man that sought his life was the same man that was used to protect him. Are you hearing me, somebody? God can use anything and anyone to do whatever he wants to do. Listen, God is different from the way you think, I'm telling you. And, and I, I think one of the problems in the church is everything is principle, 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 principle. It has to be relationship. We have to go beyond principle to the place of relationship. That was the difference between the relationship between David and God and between Saul and God. Saul related to God based on principle. David related to God based on relationship. Somebody say, I hear, I hear you. Somebody say, I honor my father. And because of that, I don't have a demon. So what happens when you don't honor your father? It's simple as that. That's what it is. And that is the problem in the church. Listen to what the Bible says. He said, he that honors me, I will honor. He said, I honor those who honor me. And those who dishonor me, I will least esteem them. And that is the reason why young men, young women are dying prematurely in the church. We are not doing well because we don't have the blessings of our fathers. We don't have the blessings of our mothers. All my sons in the ministry who are doing very well, we have a very good relationship. Dr. Ampia Kofi is here. He has, he, he has a mega, 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 mega church. Huge. Great evangelist. When I called him and I said, I need you to come, he bought his own ticket. I didn't pay for his ticket. He bought his own ticket and he flew down here. He just came from Orlando. I said, I want you to go to Paula White's church, do a 72 hours prayer meeting them, pray for them. He went there. He, he's back. And I haven't given him any offering. And I told him, I want you here tonight. And he's here. And he will do whatever I ask him to do. And he's very anointed, you see. He's very gifted, very anointed, very powerful in miracle ministry and everything. But he understands how it works. There are rules of engagement. You want longevity in this life. You have to follow God's protocol. And I don't care what your mother does wrong, what your father does wrong, you got to honor them. One of my daughters did something and spoke to her mother in a wrong way. And I called her into the room and I said, that is your mother. And, and she said to me, but daddy, she's wrong. And I said, yes, I know she's wrong, but you are also wrong. So you have to go and apologize. And she said, what, what will happen if I don't? I said, if you don't, you've opened the door and Satan will touch you. And I can't cover you. And I said, I will only cover you. I know she's wrong. She's out of order. But you got to go say, mom, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And I said, when you say that, you shut that door. And if she doesn't forgive you, it's between her and God. But you are covered. You ready to pray? Okay, let's look at one or two scriptures and let's pray. <clears throat> Second Samuel 15 and 12. 2 Samuel 15 and 12. 2 Samuel chapter number 15 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And Absalom sent for Ahitophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor, from his city, even from Gilar, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong for the people in 
preached continually with Absalom. Listen, look at me. The fact that a lot of people who follow a son against a father does not mean God is with the son. Do you know what I said? You have to be very, very careful. The fact that you see multitudes and people will increase and they follow a son does not mean God is with that son. And hear me, I'm going to say some few powerful things. Number one, inheritance comes from fathers. It doesn't come from sons, nor siblings. It comes from a father. Number two, a blessing comes from a father, not from brothers and not from a son. And there's a difference between a gift, an anointing, an ordinance, and the place of a father. Your gift, your anointing, does not make you a father. I have sons who have more churches more than me. Some of them are more gifted more than me, but I'm still their father. I'm telling you. And I train them. And they are gifted. I have sons who are very sharp in the prophetic. Laser discernment. But I am their dad. And some of them when they have issues, they come to me. And sometimes they will come and say, Papa, 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 this is what I see. This is what is going to happen. And I say, son, let me tell you something. You are a seer, but I am an overseer. So don't scare me with what you are saying. Say, I hear you. The Bible said that Absalom, and, and watch this. The, the sad thing with this situation was this was his biological son. Not a spiritual son, a biological son. Absalom, from his own loins. There was, and the Bible said the conspiracy was strong. What made the conspiracy strong? There was a man by the name of Ahitophel. And the Bible said when you heard Ahitophel, it was as if a man has heard the oracles of Adonai. The guy was no joke. He was heavy. He was an elder. He had been with David for 40 years. And when the son betrayed David, his dad, Ahitophel joined Absalom. And the fact that some of our leaders and people with money and elders in the church would join certain individuals who take a stand against leadership does not mean God is with them. I'm telling you. It's part of the conspiracy, but God will judge them. Do you know Ahitophel died prematurely and Absalom died prematurely? Both of them. Ahitophel was from the land of Gilead where the oil, is there any balm? Is there not a balm in Gilead? And the balm of Gilead was used to heal but he couldn't deal with his own offenses and his own wound. So he sided with Absalom the son of David against his father. And it was a temporary victory. It didn't last. And I've seen people in some of my churches, they side with young men against me. And I'll call them and say, you can't do that. And they say, well, we've had it, we've had it. It's about time we move on. I say, move on to what? I say, what are you moving on to? You are ready to be in violation of the ordinance, ordinances of God in the name of moving on? No. And I just leave them alone. And sometimes families, they'll come to me and they all want to move on. I said, okay, you can go. And I said, let it go on record that you left without my blessings. But I cannot hold you. You can leave, but you don't have my blessings. And then sometimes they leave and then the young man will say, well, Papa is still my Papa. He, he knows all of this. They, and sometimes they will invite him and invite some of my sons. And they will call me and say, Papa, so-so and so have invited me. Can I go? And I said, no, you can't go. 
And all they are trying to do is to tell the world that they have a good relationship with me. That everything is okay. Why is they stabbing me in secret? So I also come publicly and said, no, everything is not okay. I disown them. Yeah. I disown you. You are not a son. You don't have my blessings. You're on your own. Then they will always come with an offering and fall on the carpet in my office. Papa, and hold my I said, don't hold my leg. I brought her, I said, I don't need your offerings. There was a time he left me many, many, many years ago over some small issue. And he's a very spiritual man, he'll tell you. And the Lord dealt with him and said, you better go back and fix it. So he came to me and I said, two things you did. You offended me and I've forgiven you. But I said you offended the church, so go to the church. And go stand before the whole church and ask the church for forgiveness. And after that, I embrace you. So he came before the whole church and apologized to the whole church. I had a young man here in Maryland. He was pastoring one of my churches. He was doing very, I won't mention the name. Was doing very, very well. Then one day he came to my house. I, I was living in Potomac. And I saw him and I said, son, you're going to be leaving me. He said, I can't leave. I'm not going anywhere. I said, you leave me. You betray me. And you start your own church. But you're going to run into a lot of problems. So he left the church. He divided the church. We were in Laurel. And he took a lot of people. There's a lady here. I can see her. I think she used to be in the church in Laurel. She used to be there. Fine. And he took many people and left. I didn't say anything. I let him go. Years after I was in my office and he was huge and they brought him, two of my bishop came with some of my spiritual daughters and they brought this man, he looked like a skeleton, like somebody dying. And I said, who is this? And when they mentioned his name, I said, I don't want to see him, get him out of my office. And everybody started crying. He was dying. And I said, what do you want? And he said, the Lord said, to me, I have to come back for forgiveness other than that I would die. And I said, you're already dead. And he was crying, everybody was crying, and I was crying. And I have to keep him in Ghana for three months to restore him. Then he came back to America. And he said, I'm giving my church to you. I said, I don't want it. You can keep it. You're still my son. You can keep that church. I don't want it. I'm telling you practical things and why things happen. Ahitophel joined Absalom. How can a son rise against his own father? But it happens. And Absalom died prematurely. Study the story, you see it. And Ahitophel, with all the counsel of the Lord he had, he had to set his house in order and he died. Now listen to what happened. David sinned. He committed, premeditated adultery and murder. Absalom did not do that. Ahitophel didn't do that. And yet David, in his sin, prayed. And God hearkened to his prayer. And the two men who didn't sin, who were judging the man who sinned, died prematurely. How do you explain that? That tells you that God's ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. And you can't subject God to logic or to philosophy. It doesn't work. We, we need some fear of God to come back to the church. We need some humility and fear of God. People must stop putting their mouth in everything. Yeah. I transfer pastors. I transfer bishops. I moved them. I just moved one of my bishops from one of my churches in London. He's been pastoring for 19 years. I told him, you are removed. And I sent another bishop to take over. And I just moved another one recently. And very soon I'm moving somebody else. I appointed you. 
And when I send you there, and I tell the congregation, you don't know them. I brought them to you. So when I'm moving them, why do you have to be attached to them? You didn't come to serve a man. You came to serve Jesus. So if I put somebody there, and it's time to move him, to move the work forward, you cannot be, you can't be attached. And I don't expect any board to come and tell me what I can do and what I can't do. I dismantled one of my board recently. I was taking a decision and the board said, I can't do it. And I asked them, who appointed you? They said, me. And I said, in the name of Jesus, by the same power I appointed you, I dismantle and dissolve you. Well, you know, that's why I'm not in America. I live in Africa. <laughs> Amen. But, but we have to be very careful that we don't allow the laws of the land to determine how the church should be governed. Because God has a way of governing his church. And I don't let my children tell me I'm 18 years so I can do what I want to do. No, 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 no. You are 18 years. You want freedom. Pay me back all the monies I've invested in you until you were 18 years. After you paid me back, then let's talk about your freedom. You are 18 years. No. You don't have a say yet. Amen? Amen. Okay, let, let's look at one scripture and then we're going to go into prayer. Say conspiracy. conspiracy. Say it again. Say conspiracy. conspiracy. I want all the young men in the church, young men and women, I want to pray for them tomorrow night. All young men and women. There's a conspiracy. It's very, very strong. I want you to pray for the young men and women. Anybody here from the ages of 15 to 30, please stand. Tomorrow night, we need to pray for you and anoint you. Hmm? We need to pray for you and anoint you. These are the potential leaders of tomorrow. These ones. You see these people standing here? They are potential senators, governors, mayors, financial moguls, congressmen and women and presidents in these people standing here. These people standing here. I'm telling you. First ladies of mega churches are in these people standing here. And the battle is not about you anymore. It's about these ones. These are the ones the enemy is looking for. And we need to put up a fight to preserve them that they go the right way, that they don't miss it. Amen? So tomorrow night, we want to pray for all and we want to bring them to the frontier, anoint them with oil and overturn the conspiracy against them. They are dealing with powers they don't even know what they are dealing with. I'm telling you, they are being bombarded by all kinds of forces of evil that they have no idea of. And we need to pray for them and contend for them like never before. I want the grandmothers to rise up in the church. I want grandfathers to stand up. And I want the mothers and the fathers to lift up your hands on their behalf. Because there is a fight for their future. Please sit down. Thank you. Say the conspiracy was strong. Very strong conspiracy. And people increase. They had people following them. The fact that people are following somebody does not mean God is with them. Don't be fooled. Are you hearing me, somebody? I've seen in my city churches spring up overnight and they become mega and everybody's rushing there. And some of my people go there and I don't see anything. I just keep quiet. And everybody's talking about it. And I'll tell them, I said, give it a year or two. It was scatter. There was one church, they came from Nigeria. They, they, they swept the whole city, including people from my church. The guy was my friend. 
I lived in America in those days, and I said to them, I said in three years, that church will be divided into three. In three years, it was divided into three. One, two, three. Because the foundation was wrong. It wasn't about souls. It was about ambition. It was about winning. It was about proving a point. It was about being the biggest thing in town. It was about relevant. It wasn't about souls. It wasn't about the kingdom. Why are you looking at me with that look, all of you? Okay, I'll give you one scripture. We'll pray. Second Samuel fifteen thirty-one, and let's pray. Second Samuel chapter fifteen and verse number thirty-one. Mm -hmm. And one told David, saying, "Ahithophel is among the conspirators mm -hmm. with Absalom." Mm -hmm. And David said, "Oh Lord, I pray thee, turn now the counsel of Ahithophel." into foolishness. There's one prayer I want us to pray tonight. For every family in this house and for this house, any ongoing conspiracy, say ongoing conspiracy. Oh, say known, known and unknown. unknown. Let, it Let it be overturned. You know, th there's this young, beautiful lady in one of my churches. She makes some serious money. And any man she dated, as soon as they agreed to marry, the young man would die. Yeah. So the last one, the guy went to sleep and he didn't wake up. He died. So I told her, I said, stop dating men. Stop it. Yeah, I just stopped it. And she said, but I have to marry. I said, not yet. You have to go through deliverance. I said, we need to talk to your mother and find out the circumstances under which she took seed of you. I want to investigate something. We need to know what's going on, why the men are dying. And we have to deal with it, take her through deliverance and break it. You see, the problem with deliverance in the church is because Christians cannot be possessed, we think that demons cannot buffet us. There's a difference between being possessed and being buffeted or being harassed or being oppressed or being afflicted or being tormented. There's a, di there's a difference. Possession means ownership. Demons can own you, but they can mess with you. They can afflict you. They can attack you. That's why we get sick. That's why Christians are afraid. God has not given us what? A spirit of what? So fear is what? It's not a feeling, it's a spirit. Spirit of infirmity, spirit of oppression, spirit of affliction. They are spirits. They can possess you if you are a believer, but they can afflict you. Hello? You ready? Every conspiracy. Thank you, Lord. Yes. How many of you have a loved one in prison? Please stand. Have a loved one in prison? Please stand. Jesus. Look at me. I have dealt with situation. Eh? I've dealt with a situation where in certain families, if you're a man and you marry into that family, you end up in prison. And you check the women of that family, they have all married, they all have kids. I'm talking about believers and they are in church, but there is no father. It's all single mothers. There's a reason for that. If you scan the bloodline, you will see something with the mother, the grandmother, and the aunties. It's right there. There are families where the men are very educated, but they never get a good job. And the women, 
get the good job and always have the money. And the men can be very educated, but they don't have a job. So the woman is in charge of the family and not the man. There's a reason for that. We're going to pray that the conspiracy responsible for whoever they are in prison will be overturned and that God will create a divine occasion to discharge them. To bring them back home. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah. I've seen it over and over again. Something happens and they are released and they come back home because spiritually, hear me carefully, I'll show you a scripture. Let me show you a scripture. Sit down. Put, put Psalm 41 verse 5 on the screen. Let me show you something before we pray. Bobby, please get ready. Psalm 41 verse 5. Look at something. My enemies speak evil of me. Number one, do you know someone is speaking evil of you? And I want you to look at me. The evil they are speaking of you can be many things. One of the evil is for you or what you love to be separated from you or taken away from you. A lot of evil. My enemies do what? Speak evil of me. Someone I'm is speaking evil of you. Jesus, Jesus. I'm telling you. Go ahead. They say, when shall he die? Did you see that? And his name perish. Okay, watch this. That word, when shall he die, say a dead wish. Somebody talk to me. Say a dead wish. Turn to somebody and say, do you know somebody wishes for you to die? Yeah. A lot of the cancer problems in the church is demonic, I'm telling you. <clears throat> yeah. Breast cancers, a lot of the cancers problems, they are all demonic. Some of them are dead wishes. Some people just go to the hospital for a simple procedure and they don't come back home, they die. They walk there alive. Nothing wrong. And they don't come back home. Say dead wishes. Say we overturn it. Now look at the last word. Go ahead. That is what? That is what? His name perish. You know what that means? Watch this. So that that name perish means there will be no legacy. Wipe it out. There are families, all the women, nobody has a child. All the men, Nobody has a child in that family. You know what it means? That is a curse. It's a strategic curse to make sure that the legacy does not continue. And all of this is happening in the church. And the enemy has failed us. And we don't see it. Why is the enemy attacking your kids? Why are our children under attack? Why? It's the legacy. Say the legacy. the legacy. Say it again. Say the legacy. The legacy. Say the legacy, the legacy is under attack. That's why a lot of the kids don't want to come to church. That's why we have to be sensitive even about the music in the church. That's why we have to look at the youth church all over again. We have to look at the children's Sunday school all over again. Because that is where the enemy is attacking. The children's Sunday school and the youth. We have to look at the children's Sunday school. We have to look at the youth. Then we have to look at the music and the worship of the church. Because some of the songs we are singing now, this generation are not used to it. So we need to have about two or three choirs in the church. A choir that is ministering to them and a choir that is ministering all ragged cross to us. Hello. Because I want my old ragged cross, my kids don't want no ragged cross. 
They don't want to be crucified. They want to leave. They don't want any hill on a hill far away. They want on the hill right now. Hello? Stand on your feet. Now, how many of you have been dreaming? Please sit. Please sit. We'll be praying for you. Please sit. How many of you have been dreaming and in your dream, <clears throat> every now and then, <clears throat> you see yourself talking or eating with a dead loved one? Somebody that has passed, a loved one that has passed, you see yourself with them. Give me a wave offering. All right. Number two, how many of you dream and in your dream you see yourself eating? You are eating in your dream. Wave at me. Okay. We got to deal with that because if you dream and you see yourself eating in your dream, they are feeding you with sickness. Yeah, a sickness. They are feeding you with a sickness. So pretty soon you go to see the doctor, they will diagnose you with something. And whatever they diagnose you with is exactly what they give you to eat in your dream. That means you are being accessed in your dream. It also means that there is an opening. Something is accessing you. And as a believer, the enemy must not access you. When you sleep in the night, you have to sleep under the auspices of the angels and under the covering of the blood of the Lamb. You must not be visited by demons. Nobody must feed you in the spirit because if they can feed you when you are asleep, it's very dangerous. They can even give you witchcraft. But because you are a believer, you cannot be possessed. You see? So they can give you something that can interfere with your spirituality. So you struggle with your spiritual life. You can't fast effectively. You can't pray like you ought to pray. Now from tomorrow, I want you to pray three times. I want you to pray three times. And this is what you do. You pray like 10, 15 minutes in the morning. 10, 15, 20 minutes in the afternoon. 10, 15 minutes in the evening. Three, four times a day. It's not how many hours you pray. Say, it's the consistency. Say, it's the consistency. And if you will do this in the next three months, you will see growth in this church and increase of finances and in attendance and in your personal life. God will blow your mind. You will see miracles happening. You don't have to bring anybody here to, you will see miracles will begin to happen in your services. Are you hearing me somebody? Because we are praying together. When we pray together, it's stronger than when we pray individually. Amen. Lift up your hands. Jesus. Matukada hasis. Malama kumahadasa. Lebroko di kadagadasada. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just begin to talk to God in the spirit right now. Before we start moving higher. Everybody just, just flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Remember we are dealing with conspiracies. Conspiracy. Conspiracy, dead wishes, ill will, ill wills, evil imaginations. Let it break. <clears throat> Overturn it. Overturn it. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> Overturn it. Overturn it. Over in Amandu Bahasis. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. I need a chair. Mm. I need a chair. Kadis. Move this. Yes. Yes. Move a child to house. Lift it up. Lift it up. Take it higher. Take it higher. I want Bishop to come see that. Yeah, Bishop. Take a test. I want another chair. Lift it up. <clears throat> lift it up. Lift it up. <clears throat> lift it up. Lift it up. 
Paya Santi Lelelele Bahasa Maka di bahar besar Anda kabar dan zadah I need another chair Shedoko Bohada Gazi Break conspiracies Put your hands together and command conspiracies to break Break conspiracies Open your mouth Put your hands together and say I pray Pray, pray Conspiracies, pray, pray, pray Break conspiracies. Break. Open your mouth. Break conspiracies. Break it. Break the conspiracies. Break it. Break it. Break the conspiracy. Break the conspiracy. Break it. Break it. Break it. I can't hear you. Break it. Break the conspiracy. Break it. Lift it, Bobby. Lift it. 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 Ilanda Bakasi Kadabaha, Eyo Soko Bobo Sanda, Keto Lobo Kosi Kadalabasa, Itala Bakadalaha, Sete Lete Boko Tabahada, Bayanda Kabakasi Kadalasa. Now hear me. Listen. Listen. This is what we're going to do. The first thing we are going to do right now, we are going to break the conspiracy of a bishop and the entire family. I want the sons to come. Stand here. Come. Where are the elders? Where are the elders of the church? I want the elders to move forward. I want the elders to move forward. Call me the elders. Let the elders move forward. There's a conspiracy against this house. And let it break. Say, let the conspiracy break. Say, let the conspiracy break. Let it be overturned. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? I'm not feeling you at all. Tell somebody we are declaring war on the enemy. Say, we're declaring war on the enemy. Hallelujah. Hippo Sadahas. Lembo Kasada. Kirava Sota. Put your hands together, open your mouth, break the conspiracy against Bishop, the family, and this house. Open your mouth, break it now. Put your hands together, open your mouth, break it, break it. Somebody get angry, somebody get angry, somebody get angry. Open your mouth, somebody break the conspiracy. Break it. Break it. Break it. Give me anointing oil. Anointing oil. Padosa. Break it, break it, break it. Put your hands together, break it, break it, break it, break it, break it. Sida Kotabaha. I can't hear you, I can't hear you. Stamp your feet, clap your hands, open your mouth, tell the devil, take your hands off, loose them, let them go.
Listen, those of you here, come out. Come out, those of you here, come out. Come stand here. I want some of you to come and stand here. I want some of you to come and stand here. Stand here. Those of you, come out. We are war. Come, stand here. Yeah, stand here. Stand here. Come. Come. I need some of you to come. Stand here. Let's form a war. Let's form a war. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say we break the conspiracy. In the name of Jesus. Against the bishop. His family. And this house. The fathers of this house. The mothers of this house. The sons and daughters. The children of this house. Say we break the conspiracy. Put your hands together. Open your mouth. Break the conspiracy. Break it. Rapaya tataria mata sada la 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 bahaya. Rapaya la 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 mata sada la 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 bahaya. Apaya tasande de de biya kataya. Rapaya la 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 mo shanda baha. Rapaya kata tataria. Apaya tasanda la 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 bahaya. Apata sanda la 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 bapa. Apaya tasanda la 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 mo shata.
Hear me. Hear me. I want us to overturn every dead wish against the bishop and his family. Say dead wish. In the name of Jesus. We overturn. Say we overturn. Say overturn. Overturn. Say in the name of Jesus. We overturn. Every dead wish. Any sentence of death. And any verdict of death. From the underworld, from the underworld, against the bishop, his family, and this house, in the name of Jesus, be overturned, 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 overturned. Put your hands together, pray that prayer right now. Put your hands together over ten. Psalm 124, Psalm 124 and the seventh verse, Psalm 124 and the seventh verse, quickly, Psalm 124 and the seventh verse, Psalm 124 and the seventh verse, we destroy the snare, say I break the snare, say I break the snare, say we command the snare to be broken. And we command, let Bishop and his family and the fathers and the mothers of this house escape, 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 escape. 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 Say so we command, we command, 
Divine escapes. Divine escapes. Divine escapes. Divine escapes. Say divine escapes. Divine escapes. Let there be divine escapes. Let there be divine escapes. For this house. For this house. For this house. For this house. Say we destroy the snare. We destroy the snare. There is a snare. There is a snare. But it will break. I said it will break. Somebody say, let it break. Let it break. Say, let the snare break. Let the snare break. Say, let the snare be broken. Let the snare be and broken. Let there be divine escape. Let there be divine escape. Put your hands together. Begin to command the snare divine to break. Satanic. And command divine escape. Open your mouth. Command the snare to break. Command divine escape. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Command the snare to break. Command the snare to break. Command the snare to break. Command divine escape. Divine escape. Let the snare be broken. Divine escape. Break the snare. Put your hands together. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Say, I command snares break. I command the snares to break. I command divine escape. Divine escape. Divine escape. Divine escape. Open your mouth. Pray for the bishop, his family, and this house. Pray for the fathers of this house. Pray for the mothers of this house. Pray for divine escape. Divine escape. Divine escape. Break the snare. Divine escape. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Let the snare break. In the name of Jesus. By your name of Jesus. Now. Now. Go to Nehemiah 4 11. We want to deal with divine invasion. Say demonic invasion. Say demonic invasion. Listen, between now and Wednesday, there's a family here. You will discover physical snake in your house. I'm telling you. Physical snake. A snake will appear in your house physically and it will be killed, but it will give you an indication of what I'm telling you. That some of you have been invaded. There's a demonic invasion. Nehemiah 4 11. Quickly. Quickly, quickly. Nehemiah 4 11. And our adversary said, And our no adversaries, <laughs> they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst amongst them mm -hmm. and slay them mm -hmm. and cause the work to cease. Any adversaries. Who have invaded this church to attack the family and the leadership of this house to stop this work from getting to the next level let them be uncovered and arrested somebody say arrested arrested, arrested. say we arrest enemies within we are enemies, enemies within, within. And enemies without. And Put your hands together. Without. Open your mouth. Pray that Fire prayer right now. Come on, somebody. Pray that prayer. I can't, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I need somebody to pray that prayer right now. Arrest every enemies within and without. Enemies within and without. Enemies within. In the name of Jesus, let them be arrested. 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 Put your hands together. Open your mouth. Come on the arrest of enemies within and without internal enemies external enemies be arrested today I am by Oshadakaya Arabakataria arrested arrested Andalayoshamahaya let them be arrested let them be arrested we are covered we remove the veil. We remove the cover. We blow the cover. Remove the cover. Destroy the veil. Or cover. Arrest. Override them. Circumvent them. We declare the removal in the name of Jesus. Take away the covering in the name of Jesus. Now, oh Lord, Makaya Sataria. Now. There is something we must do in the next 90 days. Say, in the next 90 days. I need a hundred people to stand in the gap for the next 90 days. Hundred people. 
I need among the hundred, I need 20 people that will fast once a week. I need 20 people that will fast. It's okay. Every Monday, I won't eat. I will fast and pray for the bishop, his family, and my church. There is a growth and there is an increase that is coming to this house. And the enemy have seen it. The enemy have seen it. The enemy have seen it. Look at 2 Corinthians 16, 9. Let's see what is there. 2 Corinthians 16, and 9. Let's see what is there. Second Corinthians 16 and 9. Let's see what is there. Tell somebody God is here. God is here. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Check the screen. I'm just first Corinthians. Check first Corinthians. Look at first Corinthians 16, 9. Yeah, for a great. Yeah. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, uh -huh. and there are many adversaries. Say many adversaries. Yes. Say many, many. Adversaries. adversaries. But let them be arrested. <laughs> Say let them be arrested. <laughs> Say we override them. <laughs> I'm not feeling you at all. The Bible says from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent take it by what? They take it by what? Force. Say we override them. We override them. I don't feel you at all. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We override every adversary. We override every within adversary. Within and without. Within and without. And we secure the open door. We secure the open door. In the next 90 days, there is a major breakthrough. There's a major harvest and a breakthrough coming for this house. But I need people to stand in the gap. Because it's not going to happen unless somebody stands in the gap. Listen, every prophecy is conditional. You heard me. Every prophecy is conditional. Hmm? Hmm. Go to Zacharias, the 10th chapter. Zacharias, the 10th chapter and the first verse. Zacharias 10 and 1. Look at something there. Zacharias 10 and 1. Why does it take so long for those of you there to put things on the screen? Are you a suspect? <laughs> Zechariah chapter number 10 verse 1. Uh -huh. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. When do you ask for rain? When? When? In the time of Talk the to me. Rain. When? In the time of the latter The word ask means demand. Somebody say demand. demand. Use the word again. Say demand. demand. Say in the name of Jesus. I demand, I demand the manifestation demand. of the rain. Of the rain. Let the floodgates of heaven open over this house. Let the floodgates of heaven open over this house one more time and let it rain. Somebody say, let it rain. Let it rain. Say, Lord, Lord. Let it rain. Let it rain. In evangel. In evangel. One more time. One more time. Let it rain. Let it rain. Go ahead. Look at it. Read. Uh -huh. So the Lord shall make bright clouds mm -hmm. and give them showers of rain. Uh huh. To everyone grass in the field. Now look at me. Hear me carefully. The rain is not going to come unless you stand in the gap. I'm just telling you. I've seen major churches scatter and die. And it was at the time of their promise, the promise of the rain. And they didn't contend for it and the adversary came in and stopped it. I'm just telling you. I need 100 people. I need 100 people. And let me explain it to you what you're going to do. Every Monday for the next three months, I need 20 people that will fast. Every Monday, once a week, you won't eat. And you pray for the pastor, the bishop, the church, his family, and this house for the manifestation of the rain. And then on Tuesday, I need 20 people that will fast. 
And Wednesday, I need 20 people that will fast. And then Thursday, I need 20 people. Then Friday, I need 20 people. Then Saturday morning at 6 in the morning, from 6 to 8, I need all the 100 people to come into this auditorium that will pray from 6 to 8 for God to send the rain. And pray for fresh fire. And fresh anointing. And fresh oil. And a new move of God in the house. I need those hundred people to go on the stage. Climb the stage. Hundred. I need hundred to go on the stage. Hundred. And God will bless you and your family. I'm telling you. You, you make that sacrifice. God will spare you and he will spare your children and your grandchildren and your family. I'm telling you. You stand in the gap and see what God will do. I need a hundred people. Bishops, I need you to count. I need a hundred people. Please help me count. I need a I need hundred people. Help me count and I need their information. And I'll send reinforcement. I'll send reinforcement. And any, any time I come to town, I'll come and pray with you on Saturday morning. You don't have to give me an offering for that. I don't need offering for that. I believe in the move of God. <laughs> count them for me. Please count them. Work with me. Count and see how many people do we have. Then I need those who will be fasting on Monday. Move on one side. Those who will be doing Tuesday. Move on another side. Wednesday move. Thursday move. Friday move. Then everybody Saturday morning from 6. You see this thing. Eh? Tell somebody maintain the pressure. Tell somebody maintain the pleasure. Say, maintain the pressure on the enemy. Look at me. Revival don't come by one-time meetings. You see, people invite me. Come to our church. We want a revival. And I say, no, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. And some churches, when they invite me, I tell them, declare one week fasting and prayer before I come. Yeah, because I'm not the Holy Ghost. I'm not the Holy Ghost. Is the Holy Ghost who does the work. So, I want all Mondays, all Tuesday, all Wednesday, all Thursday, Friday, move them. And then we are going to assign, we are going to assign shepherds. Okay? We are going to assign shepherds for the Monday people, for the Tuesday, for the Wednesday, for the Thursday, for the Friday. I'm going to talk to Bishop. We are going to assign leaders. Now, this is what I want to do. The Monday people, I want the Monday people, the Monday people, go over there and sit down there. Monday. Monday, go all over to the back there. Behind. Monday. Thank you. Monday, go. Go and sit over there. Please be seated. Those of you, that be seated. As much as possible, do not leave. Then I want the Tuesday people to go and sit over there. At the extreme end, Tuesday, go all over there. Sit at the extreme end. Tuesday, over there on my left. Tuesday to my left. Monday to my right. Tuesday to my left. Over there. Monday to the right. Tuesday to the left. Go to the end there. Go to the end. The end there. Tuesday, go to the end there. Yeah. And make sure everybody gets, gets the form. I need everybody's information. Okay, that information is not coming to me. It's going to Bishop. Your email, telephone number, who you are, what you do, everything. We need all that information. Bishop needs it. I don't need it. I live in Africa, so I don't need your information. Go to the extreme end. Position them, please. Position them. Yeah, let them go up there and sit at the extreme end there. Listen, not outside, at the top there. Top there, top there, please. Somebody organize them for me, please. Let them sit up there. Yeah, let them sit up there. Yeah, let them go up there and sit there. Yes, let them go up there and sit. Yeah, and then the Monday people, let them sit down there. Please, sit down there. Yes, yeah, sit, sit. Organize them to sit. Yeah, organize them to sit. The Mondays, the Mondays, sit, please. Please, yes, the Mondays. Thank you. Thank you. Where are the Wednesday? The Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday. Wednesday, you go here and sit at the... The same place, opposite the Tuesday. Sit up here. Listen, Pastor Matthew, can you go up there, please? Go stand up there. Let them come there. 
you are where that elder is. Let the Wednesday people come there and sit there. Get all their information. And Bishop will decide who will be the leaders. Yeah. So is that a Monday? This is Monday. Monday, go decide. Monday, go decide. Move. Move on. Move on. All the Mondays, move on. So where is Wednesday? That is Wednesday. Where is Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. We need some more hands for Thursday. We need some more people for Thursday. Thursday is too small. We need 20. We need 20 for Thursday. Just once a week, you can eat the rest of the days of the week and you fast only one day. Just one day. We need some more hands for Thursday. More hands for Thursday. Can I have some more hands for Thursday? I need some. God bless you. Thank you. I need more hands for Thursday. More hands for Thursday. Let's see how many hands do we have for Thursday. Please count for Thursday for me. Please count for Thursday. Please count for Thursday. Please count for Thursday. Elder? Sir, can you go there? Huh? Push them this way. I want the Thursday to count. Sir. Please count. Okay, how many do I have for Thursday? Count. How many? 24. 20. Great, so come. Follow him. Go there, let them sit there. You see where the pastor is standing, waving? Go there. That is your place. I want all their information. Email, telephone number, who you are, what you do, how long you've been in the church. Just tell us everything about you. And as you do this and stand in the gap and pray and fast, there will be an open heavens over your family, an open heavens over the works of your hands in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you are Friday? Friday. Friday. Okay, Friday. Do you have all your information? Let's make sure we have everybody's information Friday. Everybody. Amen. You can sit here Friday. Just come sit here. Hmm? Just sit there. Just make sure we have all your information. Amen. All right. Now, this is what we do. Tonight, we are not taking an offering. Okay, Bishop, can I? Yeah. We are not taking an offering tonight. So, if you brought a vow, an offering, whatever, keep it. You can bring it tomorrow. Okay? We, we, want, to, we want to be led by the Spirit of God and we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit and interfere with what the Spirit of God is doing. So if you took any of the book and you have your money, you brought it, you keep it. We trust you, you can bring it tomorrow. But today, we are just going to end here and we'll be back tomorrow. Okay? Will you allow me to do that? Oh, you don't like that? Come on, what's wrong with you? Come on, put your hands together and thank God. Amen. Okay, so tomorrow is Tuesday, eh? Tomorrow is Tuesday. So where are the Tuesday folks? 29 of them, great. Okay, we need all the... Eric, make sure we get all the information from everybody tonight. Yeah. We, you have to collect everything. Let's collect everything before they leave. Okay, I'm going to ask Dr. Robert Ampiakofi, he's going to pray for Bishop and his family and pray for us all, and we will go home. But I want you to do this. Everybody, look at me. Tonight, those of you who can pray at 12 midnight, 12 midnight, just for 10, 15 minutes, will you do that, please? And then those of you who can pray at 3 a.m., Will you do that, please? Then those of you who can do five in the morning, just 10, 15, 20 minutes, can you do that, please? And then those of you who can do six a.m. in the morning, can you do that, please? Somebody say corporate prayer. Say corporate prayer produces corporate power. And that is what we need in the church. We need everybody praying and everybody setting the fire. So when we come together, 
There is mega power everywhere because everybody is on fire. Is anybody hearing me? How many of you want the rain? You want it to rain in this house? Come on, talk to me. You want it to rain? Come on, put your hands together. You want it to rain? Then shout, Lord, open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. Say, Lord, let it rain. One more time. Let it rain. I went to a nation and it hasn't rained physically for many years. And when I stood up to preach, the Lord said, tell them, this shall be a sign that I'm sending the rain of my spirit. That it shall rain after the service tonight. And it rained after the service before we left. It rained the whole night till the next day. It's about to rain. Tell somebody it's about to rain. It's about to rain. Are you hearing me say it's about to rain? All right, stand on your feet. Bishop, you want to pray for us? Lift up your hands, everybody. We want to cover the bishop and his family, sons and daughters, the children, this house, and we want to secure every father in this house, every father, every mother, every young man, and every young woman. In the name of Jesus, let them be delivered. Let them be preserved. Let their lives be spared. Let them escape the snares of death and of the grave. Lift up your hands, everybody. Bishop, pray for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight we thank you for all we have heard. We bless you for the life of our dear Bishop and his family. In the name of Jesus, may he be spared from every wicked arrow, for every designed arrow of the enemy. Let it backfire and boomerang and go back. In the name of Jesus Christ, may every ill wish, death wish against him and his family, let it backfire, boomerang, and go back. In the mighty name of Jesus, we live over the entire family. In the name of Jesus, may they escape this of the fowler. The snares of every fowler, the traps of the enemy, the snares of the wicked, let it be dismantled tonight in the name of Jesus. Scattered diseases that were assigned against this house in the name of Jesus. And Father, now every husband every family head every mother every father let them have divine escapes let them be delivered from evil let that wishes be destroyed let the snare of the fowler be destroyed in the name of Jesus let them escape tonight in the name of Jesus escape now we ask for your blessing over this church the new thing you have designed for this church what the enemy was trying to prevent now oh lord uh, let the rain fall uh, let the rain fall let the rain fall in the name of jesus in the time of the latter rain uh, let the rains fall 